In this quick video, we're going to cover something that's relatively complicated if you were to do it yourself, but very easy when done in software. What we're going to do is extract the volume that's derived from these two 2D curves. Now, I've already converted these to what are called NURBS curves. NURBS right there, and NURBS are what are going to let us use the loft tool on them, which we'll use in a moment. But if you had a simple polygon like circles or squares or the polygons I drew these from, you would just use modify, convert, and convert to NURBS to get these objects. NURBS are what you'll want in order to do a loft surface. So now we can see here, this is from a top plane view. The blue is the top curve, and the red one is the bottom one. And you can see that a little easier in this view. And we want to get the volume between these two shapes. This is just a simple example. I mean, there's a number of reasons you would want to get the volume out of an area, a reservoir or a pool in an existing construction or a swale, anything like that, where you want to pull the volume out without having to do a lot of individual measuring or individual checking after the fact. And what we'll do is we'll go into the 3D modeling tool set and we'll scroll down and we want the loft surface tool. Now, we don't know, in this particular example, we don't have a shape. We could have a curve here, or a straight line, or an inverted curve giving us the shape of the wall here, but we don't have that. We just have the top and the bottom curve, so we're just gonna click these two points. Now, it really doesn't matter where on these you click. We'll go ahead and click one, and then we'll click the other. You see it's connected them at the point here. As long as this line is vaguely straight, we're okay. It doesn't matter which point you click on them. It's not gonna determine those two anchor points. When we click the check here to start the operation, we can get a preview. And we can see that these lines are pretty straight. We don't have to worry too much about them. If we adjust this slightly and then preview again, you'll see they tilt at an angle, but we don't want that. They were pretty good at uh, zero. Yeah, they're nice and up and down. And of course, what this would do if we just started here would create a loft that would just cover the edges between these two points, but we want a solid. So we could just go ahead and hit OK and create it now and then cap the bottom and top and then get the volume from it. But there's an option in loft creation that creates a solid for us by default that won't preview here. Click OK, and then we'll render in OpenGL. And now you can see we have a nice solid. So see, we didn't need to do anything special. We have the option here. Now, this will give us the depth and the width and the height, but it doesn't give us the volume for this generic solid. But we can extract that with a command. We'll go to Model volumetric properties and here this will give us a volume of the entire object so here I believe it's set to square meters and cubic meters if we go into the document and go into document settings and units yeah that's what it's gonna give us so if we want we can change this from cubic meters this could be cubic centimeters you could make this whatever you like it to be it will report in here I'll change it to cubic yards it'll report in that unit so if we go to model volumetric properties, it'll give us the cubic yardage as well. So this is just respecting your documents unit settings. And if you don't feel like typing this out, you can click this, click OK, click a spot on the drawing, and then if you go back into top plan, there it is. It'll write it out for us. And this will work on more complicated shapes as well. We just kept a very, very simple example for this particular video. You can use this um, even on contours that come from a site model. You can extract them, convert them to NURBS, and then you'll be able to get volumetric properties for certain areas. So if you have a reservoir or a lake, you can actually get the volume of water from that or the maximum volume of water in any case.